Our next speaker is Florica Zaharia, and she's already been introduced, but I have a slightly different uh, take um, here on it. When Florica first joined the staff of textile conservation in 1988, I had the pleasure of working with her on the restoration of the Borgos Tapestry, where she quickly demonstrated her impressive skills. She has been one of only a few conservators who have worked full time for a period on the tapestry. And since then, Florica has moved on to many other projects with her invariable proficiency. Um, as you heard earlier, Florica became conservator in charge of textile conservation um, unofficially in 2003 and then officially in 2005. And among her many professional projects in her new position was the overseeing of the installation of the tapestry exhibit that Tom Campbell curated in 2007, Tapestry in the Baroque Threads of Splendor. And it is on that subject, installing tapestry exhibitions at the Met, that Florica will speak today. Thank you, Tina. The purpose of this presentation is to give an overview of a method of installing of a hanging vertically by slat and Velcro system in the Metropolitan Museum of Art tapestry collection. We will refer today specifically to Western European tapestries. In Europe, the tapestry was one of the most important art form comparable to paintings and frescoes. The predominant wool fibers used to weave historic tapestries, as well as the tapestry large dimension were appropriate for covering large walls and insulating rooms against the cold. Their large dimension permitted the designer and weaver to narrate the most complex stories, often biblical or mythological. At their best, the tapestry vivid color and highlights of the design accent, um, accentuated with the use of silk and metallic threads created a spectacular display that could transmit a direct message and please the viewer. Consequently, the tapestries were made to be hung vertically on the walls and viewed at a right angle by persons standing in front of them. Could historic tapestries be installed and displayed safely by being hanged vertically in the museum's gallery's walls? We're um, hoping to respond to this question in the following presentation, as well as during our symposium. At the Met, the installation method were developed and refined over the years. They are based not only on the technical characteristic of the tapestries, weaving, and materials, but also the collection-specific preservation factors, gallery characteristics, availability and qualification of manpower, and the safety of the art and its installer and viewers. A tapestry should be handled as little as possible. Tapestry are significantly affected by handling because they are not rigidly constructed and because of their organic nature. Physical stress during the manipulation of a tapestry can provoke instant or cumulative distortion, abrasion, and tears. Its construction, condition, size, and weight must be considered also. One of the most important basic rules in handling a tapestry is maintaining the perpendicular relation between the warp and the weft at all times. First to be considered when deciding upon a specific installation method is the tapestry materials and its woven structure. Those elements are the ones that determine its specific behavior during the handling and during the exposure time. In European tapestry, um, we see that they were woven as plain weave discontinued west face. The weft used to weave the motifs became discontinued at the end of a specific form and was connected to the next weft, usually of different color, through variation of tapestry weaving technique, known as slit, dovetailing, single, and double interlock. 
The needed strength for the hanging and handling of a tapestry was one of the first um, and the most important factor to be carefully considered when materials for weaving were selected and when the weaving was done. The warp yarn uh, in this slide, in this image, was made of coarse and long wool fiber, usually. Span and ply, usually four to eight threads together. So we're talking about a very strong element. The weft yarn, which we're seeing it in these slides, primarily made of wool and silk, was also spun uh, and usually plied two to three threads together. The weaving in European tapestry was done with the image oriented horizontally. And this is for the reason that the representation of the vertical figures with the accent of lights and shadow could be woven with greater detail. This is because the weft concentration is much higher than the warp concentration. The, the, the balances could be one to 10. And this is not the case in other type of tapestry of which we are not gonna talk today, but uh, we do have to remember that tapestry is an ancient, sorry, an ancient technique that has been used in um, worldwide and uh, a few examples could be the Islamic tapestries, the Asian tapestry, and they all have different um, uh, rapport between the warp and weft. Now, therefore, in the hanging position, the weft is the element oriented vertically, and the warp is the one oriented horizontally. The necessary strength for hanging is assured by the quality and the high weft concentration and by the stability of the woven structure. For example, a tapestry woven with a double interlock uh, would stand the hanging stress better than another one woven with the multiple slits where we have an open area. The method of installing a tapestry also depends on its dimension and weight. For example, a Renaissance tapestry of approximately 15 by 25 feet richly woven with an abundance of metallic threads would be handled differently from a tapestry of the same size woven during the Baroque period, which could have been woven with wool and silk only. When hanging historic tapestry, one must consider their condition a crucial factor. If damaged, the tapestry should be treated and consolidated prior to hanging. A variety of treatments and consolidation methods would be performed, including cleaning, reconstruction, and reweaving, stabilization by an open tabby weaving, a consolidation to a support. Just a few examples. This subject is covered by my colleague presentation in the symposium morning and afternoon sessions. Equally important fact factor to be considered for uh, the vertical hanging of a tapestry are the straps, um, which assure the support to the back of the tapestry, the lining that protect the entire back of the tapestry, and the hanging elements, usually webbing and Velcro, that will be attached to a slot through which the whole tapestry weights will be distributed. The characteristic of the museum galleries needs to be considered also. At the Metropolitan Museum of Art, the majority of our tapestry collection is displayed on non-historic uh, non walls, which have a permanent picture rail. When hanging oversized tapestry, an additional picture rail could be constructed at the maximum high level. The availability and the qualification of manpower are additional factors that need to be addressed when choosing a tapestry installation method. A team with a designated um, coordinator, which is a conservator, it's often required to handling large tapestry and may include conservators, curators, collection managers, technicians, and art handlers. For example, for the preparation for hanging and installation of a tapestry, let's say 15 feet high, which correspond to the weft, the hanging dimension, and 25 feet wide, which correspond to the warp, the horizontal direction, the effort of approximately 20 people is needed. 
three methods um, of installation are used as a main method in, in the museum. A, the rigs carry the accordion pleated tapestry on an insulation board and lower the tapestry to, il full, to its full length. This method is used for oversized and or heavy tapestries. Method B, the tapestry is folded on an installation board kept on the floor near the installation wall and installed using rope, blocks, and tackles. This method is used for oversized lightweight tapestry and for medium-sized pieces. And finally, the last method, the piece is open flat on the floor near the installation wall. Unfortunately, in my image, the tapestry is already up there, but it should have been started from the floor, openly, um, open completely. And uh, the tapestry is hanged with um, rock blocks and tackles. This method is used for small and medium-sized tapestry and for narrow-shaped pieces. Now, how complex is the process of installing tapestry at the Metropolitan Museum of Art? Recently, the Department of Textile Conservation was fortunate to have the experience of installing two major exhibitions, both uh, curated by our director, Tom, Thomas Campbell, Tapestry in the Renaissance in 2002 and Tapestry in the Baroque in 2007. Both exhibitions were based primarily on international loans. A series of factors needed to be considered, specific preparation for installation of each tapestry by its lender, the lender's requirements for handling during unpacking, preparation for installation and methods of installation, condition check, equipment necessary, and gallery preparation. For conservators, the work starts more than a year in advance of the installation, including working with the curator of the exhibition and collecting information relevant to the condition, dimension, and installation preparation of, for each piece. Based on this collected information, the conservators participate in planning for installation together with the curator, designer of the exhibition, art handler, and exhibition coordinators. The method of installation is then decided. However, for each tapestry lent to us, its installation method is confirmed only after the condition of the piece has been checked and the method selected has been approved by the lender, courier. All those factors are organized into an easy to read and work with chart that we see here. And uh, this is quite a standard uh, work for the department for any major exhibition. After the art arrives at the museum, the process of its installation begins with its being transported from a storeroom when land tapestry are kept. The handling is done by the museum team of art handler. Until it's unpacked, the tapestry is stored, wrapped and suspended on the clean and covered floor in the gallery. The condition of packing in the cradle is recorded. This information will be consulted after exhibition when the art will be repacked to return to its owner. In order to minimize handling, the top is marked and the tapestry is positioned in the best orientation in relation to its hanging place. Um, here, the conservators and art handlers are um, ready to start the unpacking of the tapestry. And if you observe, the floor is covered with a pl plastic sheeting. This is very important for the um, movement that will follow. The tapestry is then unpacked uh, obverse side up. The packing materials are kept on top so they can be easily removed and not interfere with the pleating or hanging process. The unpacking is done by conservators, technicians, and or the art handler under the supervision of conservators. The rolling style and materials are recorded at this moment. This information, again, is gonna be used um, after the exhibition close and the art will be uh, repacked. 
The condition check of each tapestry is done by museum conservators and the lender courier when the art is horizontally open and or when it's vertically exposed. The process is repeated after an exhibition has closed. After confirming the tapestry's dimension, the hanging slat and Velcro preparation is finalized. Here, the conservators um, position the tapestry top over the slat. The tapestry Velcro is attached to the slat from the center towards both ends. Up to this step, the process of tapestry preparation for installation is the same for all three methods of installation. From this point, the tapestry could be installed as described as method C, in which case the tapestry is hung using ropes and black and tackles to help the movement of the tapestry from its horizontal position on the floor two pair of assisting people who work simultaneously and across from each other an opposite side of the tapestry slowly move the tapestry onto the plastic sheet, which is then slid, um, uh, slide toward the installation wall. This method is not an, if this method is not an option for installation, perhaps because the tapestry large size or weight, the tapestry needs to be accordion pleated. If condition permitted, and if can be possibly be correctly executed, the pleading could be done. The method and coordination of pleading the tapestry is crucial. The work is done by conservators and may include, may include collection manager and um, technicians. It is essential that a single coordinator conservator assign specific position to each member of a team and give um, precise handling instruction to ensure that the handling is balanced throughout the textile. Team synchronization is also, also very important so that the movement handling will be simultaneously throughout the textile to avoid stress on any particular area. The whole process could be done starting with the tapestry open um, obverse side up on a surface covered with plastic, which assures smooth movement. To avoid abrasion, if the tapestry is to be installed with ropes, black and tackles, as described in the, in the method B, plastic sheet could be added between the folds during the folding process. For pleating a large tapestry, with its top edge to a slat, um, attached to a slat, the main power distribution is as follows, and we see that a little bit in this slide of the installation of our famous by now Burgos tapestry. Um, the pleading team stand behind and parallel to the slat, one at the center and one at each end. Depending on the tapestry's width, there might be more participants dispersed al along the top edge. The number of people necessary is in direct relation to the length and weight of the tapestry. At the bottom, there are two people at each corner and one or two in the center if necessary to allow air to flow under the tapestry lining, freeing it and permitting smoother, gentle movements. Simultaneously, each uh, team of two working at opposite sides uh, take over the moves towards the top of the release tapestry. Lastly, another two conservators, one here and one should be on this side, working on each side uh, of the tapestry and opposite to each other, closer to the slat, start the pleating process. The team at the top edge takes over the excess of tapestry provided to them, assuring the even folds from left to right to their simultaneous um, movements. The tapestry folding line should not be touched, nor should be silk or metallic woven area. Spun and ply yarn, which has been used for tapestry weft, has the ability, except if condition is very poor, 
has the ability to bend during folding because of their, uh, the fibers diagonal position specific to spinning and plying. Now, the tapestry shown here is um, already pleated, accordion pleated on the board, ready to be installed. Perhaps the most challenging method of installation is the one I describe as a type A, in which rigs lower the tapestry of its full length. This operation is performed by art handler following um, the conservator's handling instruction, as well as the specification of the exhibition curator and designer. I will describe this method. After folding of the tapestry is done, the tapestry loosely tied into the installation board um, is positioned near the installation wall. The tapestry on the board is positioned over the extended basket of the rigs. Now the rigs carry the tapestry up near the picture rail. The slot is attached by wire and hooks to the rail. And slowly the tapestry is unfolded as the rigs lower it down. The, one of the biggest challenge here is to coordinate the um, rigs movements. They must be simultaneously coming down, otherwise um, uh, tapestry could be damaged. After the tapestry is it, um, come all the way uh, down, the wire are secure after the final and the final adjustments are made. In a day work, our team could prepare for installation and install um, somehow somewhere around five tapestry, although uh, we have done more than that. Um, and um, it depends on the, on the number of people involved. In the method of installation described as a type B, the tapestry is folded, kept on the floor near the installation wall, and installed with rock, block, block and tackles. Here the tapestry, already accordioned uh, on the installation board, it's transported from the lab to the gallery. Block and tackles with ropes are attached to the picture rail after the gallery walls were checked and, and Truly clean. Copper wires were attached to the screw eye of the wooden slot. And um, finally, the tapestry is raised to the desired position. The wire are secure to the S hook and attached to the picture rail. Now, as a conclusion, we at the Met have a great advantage in the presence of and ability of a team with whom we have accumulated years of productive experience by working together um, through many of our museum projects. Also, we are fortunate to have a long history of um, um, working with our collection and to to f follow up and to check our, uh, the results of our work. And um, an installation success, I would like to say, it's based on the solid preparation of the art, of the installation space, the tools and equipment, the condition of the specific team of experts, and most importantly, the choice of specific method and the handling of the tapestry is in relation to its particular technical and um, characteristic and its condition. Thank you for your attention.